She was like, girl, I went to squat and cough and it was like a freaking pinata. Just What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, I have a crazy story time for you guys today and I'm going to be going over the ins and outs of a prison strip search and let me tell you, there is no worse day to have uh, than being strip searched. And while a lot of people might think that you're only going to get strip searched one time, that is completely incorrect. And I'm going to break all of that down for you guys today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison and my entire life story is in the description box down below. If you want to follow me on any other social media platforms, TikTok, we just hit 500K over there, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever going to be $2. Uh, all of that is linked down below, as well as my vlog channel where you can see me doing vlog stuff. So be sure to follow me on all that other stuff. <laughs> all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So let me just start with, we get strip searched all the time in prison. And I know that sounds strange, like you should only get strip searched in intake when you're first arriving at the prison or a jail facility. That is just incorrect. So let me tell you all of the times that you will be strip searched in prison. If you have a visit, when you go into the visit, you have your visit on the visitor floor and then you have to get strip searched when you go back into the unit. If you work at Sallyport or the back of the prison where food and different things are brought into the prison and you're the, the gatekeeper, that's not what they call it. I just watched Thor, it's not called gatekeeper, but there's gates where trucks will come into the compound and if you work at Sallyport, which is what that's called, you have access to, you know, more things than your typical everyday inmate would because you know the truck is coming in or what have you. So if you work at Sallyport, you will be strip searched every day that you work Sallyport. If you have court at a county jail and they transfer you from prison to county jail, you will be strip searched. If they think that you are doing something or you have something or you're acting suspicious, they will strip search you. There are so many different reasons why you're strip searched in prison. And I know this might sound weird, but you're handcuffed a lot. You would think that you're just handcuffed when you're arrested, but that is also not true. You're handcuffed if you go to SAG. When you're in SAG, you're handcuffed to go to the shower, you're handcuffed if you have to go to medical, you're handcuffed to go to rec, you're handcuffed a lot. If you're transported at all, you're, you're handcuffed, black boxed up. You're chained up to another person on transports, you know, so you're chained up a lot, you're strip searched a lot. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys what a strip search looks like, sounds like, feels like, and then I'm gonna tell you a story time about the strip search. So here's the tea. Strip searching is the most uncomfortable, awkward, dehumanizing, gross thing that you will ever experience as an inmate. It is awful. It is absolutely freaking terrible. You're in a room, you're naked, you're cold, and there is a person of the same gender, sometimes with a flashlight, and they're yelling at you to open every body part, uh, your mouth, they have to look behind your ears, under your armpits, under your boobies. They have to see your entire body. Then you have to bend over, spread your butt cheeks as far as you can possibly spread them and cough as hard as you can cough. And if you do not do that right, they were like, no inmate cough, I said cough. They wanna see the cough from your, you know, parts. <laughs> They wanna see your parts moving as you're coughing. It is disgusting. If you don't do it right, or the way that they think is right, they will scream at you and make you stand there longer and they will think that you have something inside of your body. If you still cannot do it correctly, they will send you to solitary confinement. It is a very difficult process to go through. It's almost like when you're going through this intake process, it's almost as if you're not even in your own body, if that makes sense. You're almost like, this has to be happening to someone else. Like, no way is this happening to me. I know that sounds weird, but it's almost like an out-of-body experience because you're like, is this really freaking happening? No way is this happening. Like, this is the worst day ever. This is the worst time of my life, the first time that you go through it. But it doesn't get that much easier. You just know what they want if you do it multiple times, which you do if you go to prison. But intake when you're going to prison is the absolute worst day of your entire life. So story time. When I was getting arrested this last time and I was very, very high under the influence of methamphetamine and pills, I 
was brought to a county jail and they changed me out. A correctional officer comes in, she is gay. And I wanna be very honest about this experience. Her and I are friends now, we've talked about this. I've apologized to her so many times when I was in jail and now we're friends on Facebook. So she's definitely watching this video. I have a lot of love for her. She no longer works at that facility, but she comes into the holding cell and I was very out of my mind high. And I don't remember saying this to her, but I was like, no, you're gay. You can't strip search me. Like this is conflict of interest. No. And I like start yelling at her. The reason why I want to be honest about that is because I was so out of my mind. Half of my friends are part of the LGBTQ plus community. And I don't care. I don't care if you're gay and you have to strip search me, but I just didn't want to be strip searched. And I was being so confrontational with any correctional officer that came near me that day. And she had to strip search me, it was her job. And I stopped yelling at her and I proceeded with the search because I wanted to get it over with. And I was so disrespectful to her and it was just awful. So I'm doing the search and I'm like, you have everything, you have everything. I gave you, you have my gun, you have the meth, you have everything, what else could I possibly have? Girl, shut up. Like that's what I was screaming at her. I was screaming at her because they already took all my stuff. They took my money. Now they're taking my freedom. I'm not squatting and coughing. You should have an x-ray machine. Fuck you like screaming at her. And that's what correction officers deal with every day, you know, and intake is a rough position in a county jail because more often than not, a lot of people come in under the influence. So they're having to deal with people, violent, aggressive, drunk, high, irate. It's four o'clock in the morning. Ain't nobody got the patience for that at 4 a.m., but that's her job, you know? So to this day, I feel bad about that. And I know that she's gonna watch this video and laugh at me that I still feel bad after all these years, but I just do. It wasn't her fault. I was selling drugs and got arrested. It was my fault. I deserve that time and Anyway, moving on. So a couple of months go by and I'm in this county jail with a good friend of mine who recently passed away. She was beautiful and so smart and so amazing. She comes in and you have like this little tote. They have a little tiny bar of soap, a little tiny toothbrush, a little thing of toothpaste or glue. We don't use that as toothpaste, but it's terrible. You have a blanket and a mat and you go to your cell. And I see her come in and she is laughing, but the correction officer behind her is not. Like this correction officer was like a sergeant in the military and now she's a correction officer and she was very aggressive and we all could not stand her because she would scream in our face. And my friend Angela was laughing because of what had happened and I'm about to tell you guys, but I'm, I'm watching this. My cell was right across from the door where they bring people into the pod in county jail and I see Angela and she's laughing and I'm like, oh God, what happened? Well, the next morning I'm like, girl, why are you here? What happened on intake? What was so funny? She was like, girl, I went to squat and cough and it was like a freaking pinata just and then mad bags just spit out everywhere and that guard was so pissed and she's laughing because it was like our coping mechanism like that's a whole charge and I start laughing at her I'm like I can't believe you would do that why didn't you just get rid of it flush it or something you know but just to see her energy and laughing through something that was so difficult like getting another charge in county jail and having that correctional officer a flashlight up in your hoo-ha and it just spits out like a pinata like as she was telling me the story I could actually like visualize how that all went down, you know? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, you got the worst intake officer. Anyone else would have picked up the baggies, charged you and not screamed in your face, but this guard would scream in your face and act crazy. So another story time. I'm in there with Hollywood. And by the way, hopefully you guys will meet Hollywood. She gets the courage to film. And then she's like, no, I'm not ready yet. It's a very intimidating thing to share your story on YouTube. So be patient with her, please. I don't want to push her. So whenever she is ready, she will come on YouTube. So she has a lighter and we're about to get snitched on. And I saw this chick go up to the guard desk and I'm like, flush it, girl. And she's like, flush what, Pff, please? She's an OG biker woman, you know? She's like, flush what? I'm not flushing nothing. And I'm like, oh God, here we go. And within maybe 20 minutes, the guard on duty was like, Kent, Hollywood. I don't wanna say her name. Let's go. And I'm like, are you good? Are you good? And she's like, it's on the shelf. It's fine. And I'm like, oh no, no. So we, we're walking up to intake and I'm looking at her like, bitch, no. This is another circumstance where we were told on for having contraband, which is a lighter. So as we're pulled out to do a strip search, the officers are in our cell searching our cell. 
they can strip search us at any time, anywhere, anytime, if we look suspicious, like I said. So now we're walking up to intake, they put us in a holding cell, and I'm like, I swear to God, if you don't flush it, they're gonna take you. They're gonna they're gonna make us not sellies anymore, and they're gonna put you in SAG, and I'm gonna lose my girl, you know? So I'm like, just flush it, it's not worth it, dude. We'll get another one. Like, I'm contraband queen, I'll take it right out of someone's pocket, I don't care. I would steal from correctional officers and staff members, and I know that sounds crazy, like, why would you do that? Because I was in survival mode. You know, and I would steal things that had no value <laughs> to the officer, like a lighter or chew or a pen or a thermometer cover for a straw that has no value to the correctional officers. It has a lot of value to an inmate. And when you're just trying to eat and wash your booty, but you're poor, you gotta hustle, right? So I'm like, if you don't flush that, I swear on everything I love, I'll be so mad. And she's like, I got this. So I went first, I volunteered. I volunteer, it's tribute. <laughs> I go first and I squat and cough and I strip search. I don't have anything on me because I was not the person to boof anything. That's a jail term. I was not going to put anything in my body because I'll just get more. That was my mentality. Hollywood goes, they don't find it. We're walking back and I'm like, no way. No way to just get away with that. Like she's a professional. So we go back to the cell and we can see from our cell, the chick that snitched on us. And because Hollywood is so bold, she picked up the lighter and she clicked it in the door and showed her like, who are you snitching on? No one. And I'm like, oh my God, don't brag about it. Like she's gonna snitch again. But this is the environment that you live in day in and day out. Doesn't matter what facility. You're gonna have to get strip searched multiple times for many different reasons. So just having correctional officers scream in my face caused issues, you know what I mean? Like it was a very difficult time in my life every time that I was locked up. And the reason why I never took it seriously before I got pregnant was because it was a defense mechanism. Laughing about trauma is how I survived and building up these walls and being so distant with everyone. That's how I survived being in and out of incarceration, in and out of drug use and you know, I traveled the country and those were my tools, was being defensive and distant and cold to a lot of people so that I could survive. And it's awful, but when you live your life in survival mode for so long, it causes PTSD. And as most of you know, I struggle with PTSD, insomnia, depression, and anxiety. It's a large bag of ugh. F that, right? So prison contributed to it, my drug addiction contributed to it. But at the end of the day, it's not my fault I was an addict, but it is my responsibility to recover and I have done that. And if you are still struggling, you are so much stronger than you know. You do not have to live your life going in and out of prison and struggling with addiction. You are so much stronger than that. And I believe in you. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober. Whatever that looks like to you, because there's no wrong way to recover. And I want to elaborate on that just a pinch this time. When I say whatever recovery looks like for you, I mean that with everything in me, I mean that. Whether that's medically assisted treatment, marijuana, 12 steps, smart recovery, God, you did it on your own, at, through abstinence, or whatever works for you, micro dosing. It doesn't matter as long as you're happy, healthy, and thriving. That is what I mean when I say whatever sobriety looks like to you, because there are so many paths to recovery and they're all valid, and you are valid, and you are amazing, and strong, and beautiful, and you can pull yourself out of addiction. Bye, you guys.